we like. We really yeah, like. we re- we like those chords. It resonates with us, and so, it's all four four too. Like it's not a lot. Yeah. Of... Anyways, I one, know nothing three, four, about music. One, so yes, it is the same chord progression, but it's the it's so invite. I'm going to surprise everyone with the topic. Because I have one right now that I think is going to be amazing, especially after the conversation we just had. Okay. Before you do that, awesome. we, you and I were right. We did not do time or, or how much is your time worth? The last one we did was what does it take to be an entrepreneur? Okay. Yeah. Great. Uh-huh. I, but, I uh, thought it was because I, I edited the last week's episode and we said <laughs> we were going to do it next week. And I remember it had something to do with that, but it, it wasn't. Okay. Well. That's right. I want to do yours instead. Okay. Here we go. Welcome to Mind Your Own Small Business, the podcast that is better than a coffee break, cheaper than therapy. I am Brian Thackeray. I am Pepperonicus Antonicus. And I'm Kramer. <gasps> Cosmo. Kidding. You got the hair. I know. And it wiggles today. Got the wiggly hair. Get a zoom in on this. Here it goes. My beard used to wiggle and then I had to trim it. <laughs> my, my wife told me to trim, trim my mustache. Going for a trim next week. Uh, so you said you had a surprise. Oh my time. gosh. I have a surprise. Okay. So. <laughs> oh yeah. Clap. That was a weak clap. My first I was like, ah. okay. Before we continue with this, mm-hmm. um, and I and if you can if you can include this link, the YouTube song "Axis of Awesome" called Four Chord Song." Okay, it's about five minutes. We'll play it for you. So, <laughs> no, I, we won't. <laughs> my favorite part is top comments on here is how many copyright strikes can you get in five minutes speed run? <laughs> <laughs> so. You need to watch that first, it's terrible, um, so. and you need to to listen to the song that they that they sing in, in that. So we're gonna let you do that right now. Five minutes have passed. Yes, hopefully five minutes are over. So, in music, something that that Pepperoni has kind of blown his mind right now is that you have a music is the same. I mean, even if you just look at how many notes exist, right? There's 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 twelve right. You're, there's twelve notes in between A and A, um, and you do them in different. You know, there's different chords and, and different schemes, but they're the same notes. And that's every song that's ever been written in Western culture. Are just the same notes. Mm-hmm. So the recipes are different, but it's the same ingredients. Music is literally Taco Bell. It's the same ingredients, but they have all of the different. Now I mean, you can sit there and say, well, but it. You know, uh, if you use cellos versus if you use guitars, or yeah, that's timber, but the actual music itself. Some of them has guacamole, some of them doesn't. So yeah, some of them you gotta pay 50 cents extra for some sour cream. <laughs> so I want to bring up and talk about differentiation. Oh. I wanna talk about, because we have these business ideas, we have things that we're excited to do. We're having, you know, you're creating stuff out of wood, I'm mm-hmm. creating sandals. We're, we're, we're in this situation where we're kind of using the same ingredients as everyone else, but for whatever reason, what we are cooking is more appealing than what someone else is making. So what makes, I, when I do this with students, I hold up a spoon, and I don't have a spoon here, I could if I wanted to, but I hold up a spoon and say, if you were to create a spoon, what would make your spoon bigger, better, faster, or stronger? Like what would make your spoon Different spoons have been around since the Egyptians. Okay, like they scoop out brains with them. That's fine. What? This like is a small shovel. So, so it is. It is just a. <laughs> it's, it's a little. It's a little fairy shovel. <laughs> Does anyone sell titanium spoons? So that. So that. So then, if I, that the question is this: If I were to tell you and say, how would you make a spoon that would be? marketable in a sea of spoons, what would be your differentiator? What would you make different about your spoon? I got to see if someone sells titanium spoons. Not, not that I would ever sell titanium spoons, but I think that would be a hilarious like marketing thing. Titanium spoons. Actually, I think I own a titanium spoon. You own a titanium I spoon? I think I'd make them flat and call it a spife. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's... That's... Funny, like and you, I'm just reminding of all of those, like the the tester, like ice cream, yeah. flat things that they give you. I get to have just, yeah, maybe make it super long and skinny. I do. This is a titanium spoon that I that I own. I own this titanium spoon fork combo. Does it does it do any like does it t- change the taste of the 
I, I do edit these videos, so I can put, like when you said I don't have a spoon on Yeah, me, put it up on the thing. You could have just said, put an image of a spoon up, and I could have done that. I'll send you, the, I'll send you, it's called the Light My Fire Camping Spork. <clears throat> this is a, it's, it's got a spoon on one side, it's got a fork on the other, and a little knife on one of the ends of the fork, so if you like eat with it, you'll just cut your mouth open. I don't yes. know, that's actually not the case. But what they did was, is they took this and they made a camping, a lightweight metal camping spoon fork knife combo uh -huh. and that's what they did to make it that was their differentiator and they made it out of titanium now they have a plastic version also yeah 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 but huh other okay so other question for you do you need to differentiate oh, yourself so you're getting ahead i'm getting yeah ahead. that's that's first question if i were to say so so let's focus on the spoons and then yeah we'll run right to that but what would you do? What would you do different? Would you make the spoon cheaper than other spoons? Would you make no. it stronger? I'd make it look different. You'd make it look different so yeah. that just the silhouette or something, they could be like, oh, that's one of pepperoni's spoons. Yep. I'd, it, the look of it would be different for me. But as far as function, it would be just a normal Totally spoon. the same. Price, the same. It would just look different. That's so interesting to me. Because, like, so is a lot of the stuff that we do, we just do because it's things that we want to make. Are you going to answer? I'm trying to. <laughs> All right. I'm telling you my point of view because that's the reason we do a podcast. We can share our points of view and what? educate people yeah, and all your that. Your point of view is a backwards 17. <laughs> oh, you're making fun of my disability. <laughs> Dyslexia, datlexia, it doesn't matter. Oh, um, I have... Dang so it's, it's a copyright. <laughs> I gotta play something for you. There's a sweet TikTok where a guy talks about renaming ADHD. Mm. <laughs> Pretty good. That's funny. I don't have it, so I thought it was funny. So what, what I'm thinking about, so our spoon, the the one thing that we've done that with and we've had success with is is our Easter tomb. Um, because we're not the only ones that sell Easter tombs, but we were able to change it in a way that differentiated us and the funny thing is like, I, I don't quite understand my wife just saw what existed and then made the one that she wanted and then put it out there and that it was just a, a few image changes and and you things like that different. and it that's that's true i did just make it look different and that that was enough and Sometimes that works. A lot of the time it doesn't, but like, I don't know. I would change the spoon in a way that would be helpful to me, I, but a, a spoon's hard because... A spoon is hard because it, you go, well, what? It's a spoon. So I've done this with classes that I've, that I've taught, entrepreneurship classes, and it's been amazing. Some people come up with things like a titanium or um, uh, some of them come up with strainer spoons so that you can eat your soup, but you don't have to drink the broth with your soup. You just you pick it up and it and it drains your, uh, your 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 cereal milk. So now you're eating the cereal without the milk. You just it's nice and and then at the end you drink the rest of your bowl. Are they, um, are they one communists? of them was a Parkinson's. No, <laughs> one of them was a Parkinson's. Cummies don't come up with new ideas. <laughs> 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 Why do you think we beat them to the moon? Sputnik will make it good. We go to up there, we try to get to moon. And then you'd be like, uh, nope, we got there, sorry. Let me just put our flag up there. So our worldwide audience is like, what? So one of them was a Parkinson spoon. A spoon that if Seen you... Those. Yeah, and so you know that kind of idea that, oh, well, you move your hand like this and the spoon stays in one place. Um, so basically a gimbal spoon. Some of them were taught, went more like, well, this is a medical grade sterilized spoon for surgeries. Um, this one is Ooh. specifically for cutting things out of grapefruit. Um, it has a little knife on it. I changed my mind. Mm -hmm. I would do, I would take the spin of the water bottles where you can infuse water as you sip. I would make that a spoon. So the spoon could hold flavors. And as you're eating something, your food would be infused with the flavor of whatever you're injecting into it. Ooh, that'd be fun. Like, you could do that with, like, ice cream. So, if you had just vanilla. Ice cream, vanilla. oatmeal. Oh, oatmeal would be cool. Cereal. Ooh, just has, has like, a syringe on it, uh, almost, essentially, so that you, you put down your oatmeal, and you just go, and then you have strawberry jam and with every with every bite. 
See, that's interesting. That's uh, when I would do that. That's why I bring up the spoon. Is because all of a sudden when you start Patent digging into it, copyrighted <laughs> trademarks. Boom. <laughs> Saw it here first. I'm just gotta make one now. Easy. So when I talk about the whole bigger, better, faster, stronger, which is actually a, you know from a, mm-hmm. a Daft Punk song, mm-hmm. but when I talk about that, it you mentioned does it have to be a differentiator? Well, I don't know, and I, I'd love to bring that up because sometimes a Snickers bar is not the best candy bar. I I. Of all the candy bars in the world, it is not the top candy bar, in my opinion. But it is the one that is most widely purchased. Why? Because it is. Knows about it. Well, and it's everywhere. It's convenient. You go to the store, there's Snickers bars there. Like, you can go and buy. You can't go and get a zero bar anywhere. You can't go and get uh, a certain, you know, Utah truffle company mm-hmm. that doesn't have that wide of a distribution. They are. They make it most convenient. Is it that much of a differentiator? Well, it's peanuts, it's caramel, it's chocolate. But they've made it so that that is easily accessible. Are you looking up mm-hmm. the most eaten candy bar? Uh, no, I was just seeing oh, how many Snickers one. are produced, or how many are sold Ooh. per year. What's your guess? Oof. You get one guess. I'm going to go 20 uh, million. It, it, are they going with units, or are they going with, with weight? I uh, Units. Units? Or like Betty White's. <laughs> How many Betty White's worth of Snickers? <laughs> All right. So. I got two mil- 20 million. I'm going to go with. So there's <laughs> roughly 300 million Americans. So guessing that one in 10. I, I would go with 30 million. You're both off. Oh, I just saw something. I think I saw the number. By a lot. 150 million? 400 million. 400 million. 400 million. Oh, because we don't buy one Snicker a year. <laughs> yeah. No. Oh. 400 million Snicker bars are sold each year. That's crazy. And, uh, well, are they counting like the, the, the Halloween candy mini bars? or Maybe. That, that would make more sense. 400 million Snickers bars. A year. A year. Yep. The number one, and that is the number one candy bar in America, is a Snickers bar. Because it, it's everywhere, and they... You got to give them their their advertising is on point. Yeah, they. You're they, not you without your Snickers or whatever it is. I feel like they're the Wendy. Well, or Wendy's is the Snickers. I guess you could. Yeah, I guess Snickers was was first. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna say with your comment of sh- um, the differentiating thing, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and have a. Oh, I feel like this is a great time to introduce. Uh-huh. Pepperoni's controversial topics. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be more like pepperoni's controversial topics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we just made it a jingle. I'm going to say that <coughs> unknowingly, consumers don't want differentiation. They want the same thing. They want four chords. Oh! They we want as as a whole as a consumer we want the same thing no matter what it looks like we want the the basis of it to be the same. However, when we do get a differentiation, let's take Reese's cups. Okay, you had Snickers and then Reese's cups was introduced, which was a totally different kind of candy, mm-hmm. and people liked it. But they still don't like it as much as Snickers. No, I mean, pe- I, I I love Reese's oh, peanut Reese's cups. Reese's is like my times jam. Um, but or but my going on butter? that uh, <laughs> peanut butter, I th- I think it's a, I think it's a bell curve though. That's number three, by the way. Reese's Reese's. What's two? You want to guess? Milky, Milky Way. No, I was su- surprised. K-Cat? What? Okay. Other big Toblerone. <laughs> it's uh, according to this. This is studyfinds.org. Totally legit. This is. <laughs> I know it's got an ad for manatees if, on it. So it's a good if it's Hershey bar, like just print up Hershey it, bar. It is not Hershey. Okay, bar. good. Butterfinger. Would... No, I want to keep guessing. Hang on. Okay, and then I can give you. A, so... It's is M and M's, but that's wow. not candy bars. Well, it's candy though. Pork peppermint patty. <gasps> There's no way because people hate Twix. those things. It's Twix. Whoa! Twix is number two. Hang Snickers on. Although, two. hang on. This might be Twix's. Uh, this, this is ranked number two. I don't know if it's sales, but this oh, is okay. this is ranked according to people that they're, eat it. And they're probably counting a Twix as two candy bars. 
So, that's yeah. probably so inflated. They, they get, they no, get, I like left twig, so that's my fave. That's a, that was the dumbest thing ever. Yeah, but did it create a differentiation? Like, it was, that was an ad differentiation. It's not even that it's a different candy bar. It's still just chocolate and caramel and maybe some little crunchy cookie or whatever. But So they, they use cookie rather than nougat. But What they... Um, you watch your mouth. <laughs> but, <laughs> By the but, way, the cookies and cream... Uh, twi- the Twix, the one that had like the cookie in it. Mm-hmm. Oh, really good. So good. The peanut butter was bomb too. But well, according now, hang on. According to Wikipedia, they're saying the top selling sweet is Reese's peanut butter cups. I just changed that. I just went on to Wikipedia yeah, and changed yeah. it. Yeah, anyone can change Wikipedia. <laughs> M and M's. So, before we go too far, like I, I want to touch back on something that that you said that we, we like the four chords. Um, I I think I think it's a bell curve. So I think that the majority of the population likes the four chords. Yeah. There's a small part of the population that's looking for new stuff mm-hmm. and is is they're buying VR before it's it's common. Yep. They're buying 3D, 3D printers. printers. They're, they're Teslas. Crypto. EVs. What whatever whatever it is, they're they're looking for the new thing before it's cool. You have like the the remaining 50% that are just buying whatever one else is buying. And they have twenty five percent are buying things that have like fallen out of grace and are buying it for the member berries, the fireflies. Yeah, if yeah, you yeah. Will, of, they want they want the next season of firefly. They want the next season of firefly. That's interesting. So I think so as a as a business owner, you you have this opportunity. I think I think you have this opportunity. You can create something that a majority of people are gonna uh, potentially buy that they like mm-hmm. the tried and true. Um, and you're going to have to compete on price, right? It could be theoretically a race to the bottom at that point because you're you're yeah. introducing something that's the same. And, and everyone else already knows that it's sold right. so that they, they can just hop in and try to get some money off of it. Or you go towards this other group that's like, I don't mind trying something new. And they have, let's say for argument's sake, they have the money. And so you're able to charge more for this new thing that's against the, the norm and then you hope that it gets adopted into mainstream as a tried and true product. Yeah, and and that usually happens by some bigger company with a lot more money buying you out and then making you mainstream. Or somebody tweeting, somebody of popularity tweeting you that or tweeting your product and influencer mm-hmm. and such. Huh. What did you find out? I, Which tidbit I of knowledge that did you go down? Not what I no. Snickers is the number one, is still not number one in the world. Even you want to know globally speaking, Snickers is the top selling candy bar. Candy bar, candy, candy bar. bar. <laughs> when visiting sites like Quora, it is the candy bar that's mixed the most. How much do they sell annually? Globally, globally, two billion billion. Two billion candy bars. Oh man, I've seen it. Probably, yeah. Or two we billion. We could cure world hunger if we just <laughs> sent Snickers to the right yeah, place. Yeah, and it, give you know, everybody a Snickers. Hungry? Why wait? Starving? Why wait? <laughs> you should tweet that at them. Maybe. They... <laughs> Mary Antoinette's over there. Let them have Snickers. And let them eat Snickers. Because oh. Mary Antoinette was British. I don't know what just happened there. Oh, <laughs> she's like, let them eat Snickers. Oh. Her father was French. Um. <laughs> Okay, what were you, what were you guys just talking about right before then? So, so I, I was I, saying that, that yeah, he was saying oh, it's a bell oh, curve. Oh, oh yeah, the bell. bell curve. So yeah, you're so what you're talking about, and this is a this is a real phenomenon. You have your early adopters, uh huh, right? And you you look yep. at you know go back to your days of studying marketing, and you do you have your early adopters, and then you've got your kind of your bandwagoners, and and then people that look back and say, wow, I I you know I'm going to get it once it's popular, and then once it's not popular, then you kind of you know go like like finals. And I would say that the early adopters have more money. A more disposable money to more disposable to jump into that, right? Or, or they're they're more willing to risk it on something. So it's not necessarily they have more money. They're like, really this could be something. I'd say status. I think people who it could, have a it focus also on could status. be a status thing too. So maybe they don't have money, but they want they don't mind going to debt for it. I was gonna say, yeah, I don't know <laughs> if it's necessarily our, like. I think it's either people that are. I think it's people that are willing to spend it that aren't shocked by price tag. Maybe that. That, that, it's, that that's true. Well, because like I don't, I don't have money, but as soon as VR became a thing, like I bought a VR headset because I want VR to be a thing, so I I voted for it with my my dollars. Same with three D printing. That was disappointing. It looks like your candidate lost. 
No, it's still I'm good. I'm just teasing. Go ahead. I have a quest too. It's <laughs> awesome. Um, Oculus. Yeah, I, I love that. Uh, but, uh, and then also 3D printing is something that I really, really like. I got it really early on before it was was very mainstream. I, it's still not completely mainstream, but it's it's, it's more of really a, close though. It's it's a known quantity that that a lot of people, anyone who wants to get into three D printing now can. can. And I think and the price barrier is low. Oh, it's much more low. And I uh-huh. think once it drops under that one, if you get printers under the two hundred dollar mark, I think that's the next benchmark to where you can find more than just like one brand. And then mm-hmm. as soon as they can start dropping under the hundred dollar mark. And I'm talking like... Could you make it, a quality 3D printer for under $100? I think you... Well... There's a differentiator. If you did create one... And I think was, the size would... I mean, the size would be... Like, would be you're small. talking like this big. Yeah, you could print like a fork or something like that. Yeah, like... Or a spoon. Or a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> but that would be a differentiator. If you could get a 3D printer for under $100... And I don't know if it has to do quality. I think if it was able to print... You know, it wouldn't be able to move fast. It it would it would have to be it would have to be easily accessible. Because the thing about three D printers, like what 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 turns a lot of people off to it is the first time it stops working, and yeah. you're like, I have, I no, have idea. no idea. And the thing is, is that it's it's still something where it's if you if you have a problem and you ask the internet how to solve it, you'll get a oh. hundred different solutions if a hundred people give you an yeah. answer. And maybe this 3D printer doesn't necessarily build out like figurines or something. Maybe this 3D printer builds shapes and it builds basically it's a Lincoln log manufacturer or a Lego Ooh, manufacturer. That would be an amazing Christmas gift where like you could print Legos or something. You like just that. print building blocks and then your blocks, you create whatever you want. Or like <clears throat> if you're able to get it to where like, uh, let's say you're on a job site and it prints mm-hmm. out things like, Nuts, bolts. Yeah. Right? Oh. You're, you're, or you're even like, like this disposable something. like spacers that they use for like tiles and whatnot. So rather than buying a bag of that, you just set it up and you hit it. And you're then, on the site. And it, and it prints what you need. But like that, that would actually be really interesting. To or print consumables. On the flip side of that with 3D printers, I think the first one that could do like, let's say a 20 meter long print in under an hour. No, that would be insane. But you have physical limitations on that. And um, uh, yeah, but now, I'm, uh, that's what I'm saying, though. If if you bridge that gap and make that differentiator, that is the one that that that'll that'll get you. So the money. that would be an innovation, uh, innovation differentiation. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's but, a salutation. But then you have to you 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 have to then sell yourself to the early adopters. So going to this, you said something really interesting: marketing as a differentiary. Dif- oh yeah. Blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> that wow. Really, Differential. We're all having facial. It's, it's, it's not me. No, nope. we're recording this on a Friday. We're all like, I want to go golfing. Um, the worst shorts golfing. because of it. Uh, but show us some leg. <laughs> Don't prove it. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm cramping. <laughs> hey, yo. Um, so this podcast is now PG 13. Uh, so, so take what was that? Um, the the soap one that that was all over the place for a while, like Sas- uh, the Sasquatch soap, like yeah, the like what the Sasquatch soap? Yeah. Don't don't put detergent on your body, and like 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 the FDA does most soaps as detergents, like that's what you put on dishes and they throw it. Detergent just means like soap. I should look that up, but it was <laughs> fact check. Yeah, fact check. What is detergent? Snope says mean? you're wrong, but but like it, it's one of those things where where Squatch. Squatch soap, Doctor Squatch. Men's natural soap, no harsh chemicals. Fun fact: I am actually a subscriber of Doctor Squatch. Mm. But much to maybe their chagrin, I had to Google it first to remember their name. <laughs> Obviously, not that big of an impact. <clears throat> well, I think that you're, the the idea of marketing based differentiation is absolutely the case. So. Um, I use this example a lot when I, when I teach and it, go to a detergent aisle, go to a, a laundry detergent. So everyone that's in here, what kind of laundry detergent do you use? Are you, are, are you, uh, do you know, are you a, you a Melaleuca user on here? No, we don't do that anymore. Okay. Uh, Tide, I okay. think. We're yep. at Tide. Number one nationwide is Tide. Do you know what you use? Awesome. Gain. So. The, <laughs> oh, Gain? The cheap stuff. Gain. gain. 
all is out there. Um, but the if you go look at that, or even better, go to the, your soap section and just look at what's there. Mm-hmm. There's like three companies that own everything that's that's sitting there, and it's like, oh no, Dove is more feminine. Dove Men is semi-masculine, but Old Spice is very masculine. And then you flip them over, and you're like, oh, they're all the same company. Unilever, Procter and Gamble, Johnson and Johnson, Henkel, uh-huh. like. But each one, the differentiator might it might be a smell, it might be, but in the end, it's how do you market to the right people so that you say, well, yeah, I use Old Spice. Well, why wouldn't you use Dove deodorant? It's like, well, because I use Old Spice. And right. in reality, they're Ain't leaving. No woman. They're oftentimes <laughs> leaving the same factory, but they have created a different bottles. a marketing and a feel about that product so that you can. Feel like it is different. It is a marketing-based differentiation. Now you can say, yeah, they use different ingredients or they mm. smell different. Yeah, it's true. But in, in the end, you're using it because you feel that that is the one that closely associates to you as a mm-hmm. user, unless well, you disagree. I, well, no, I was going to say, one other thing is that, like, that, that reminds me, there was this YouTuber who talked about how <laughs> in order to make money, he wanted to become a tutor. But in order to hit the widest audience possible... He launched like six different tutoring websites all at the same time at different price points so that people could be like, oh, I could do this one, but this is $30 a session, but this one's $15 a session. It's probably not that good because it's the cheapest. I'll go to the $20 one. They're all him though. And so like he, he did that in a way to, to, to pull a larger uh, market share. Uh, and that's funny because like, he differentiated himself by creating different avenues that people could think that they're getting. I don't know. That's it's the illusion of choice. You, it is. You, it and, is. Yeah. and consumers want the illusion of because we do. <laughs> you're talking about how the they, everyone wants those same four chords. Look, I do not disagree with you because so I went to a, a concert on Wednesday and it was a guy who put nails, sticks, screws, and things inside of a piano and played a piano totally different. Now, mm-hmm. it was super cool to watch this happen and to, and to feel the sounds and know the sounds. And It's not like I'd go drop that into my... Your uh, piano. Uh, well, or even in my car and listen to it. Be like, hey, man, check this out. <laughs> bing, bong, dong. Bing, bing, dee. Bum, bop, bop. And you're like, no, it's not, that's because that's what it sounded like. Apparently, it, it was... Lure. It did. So, but, but when you get in the car, you're like, well, great. I want to do, you know, uh, Weezer, Say It Ain't So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Almost identical chords to Pachelbel's Canon and D. It's the same song. I know because we once played a rendition of Pachelbel's Canon and D and then transformed it into Say It Ain't So. Say It Ain't So on cello, guitar, and and piano, and drums. Um, I like listening to music. I'm also realizing now that I am like stupid when it comes to musical knowledge. That's okay. You're a good consumer. (laughs) (laughs) You're you're the kind of people Taylor wants you. Ooh, so is that what we want? We want consumers that don't think? And don't know any better? No, 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 no. You don't want those, but they exist. So you take <laughs> advantage of them. <laughs> and oh, obviously, if you're listening to this podcast, you're not one of those people. <laughs> we're targeting you for a reason. Yeah, you're, we're targeting the smart ones. But no, I, I, so I think that there is a place, and like with music, you find early adopters. Or you have people that are like, hey, man, I just found, I listened to this band in the basement of someplace in Portland, and it's like, you I listened to Imagine Dragons when they were handing out free CDs. Same. And I thought they were the coolest band ever, and like, now everyone knows about them. Yeah. They're huge. I, same. I was, in fact, it was, a, yeah, it was the same type of thing. They're handing out CDs, and I remember thinking, oh, gosh, this is... This is kind of different, you know, and uh-huh. then listen and be like, this is awesome. And then telling, uh, I was at the university newspaper office, and I remember telling one of my sales associates, you should check this out and hand in that CD. I remember trying to find like a station like online, and like they just, no, there was nothing. There's nothing. They I looked for exist. Imagine Dragons. Like, did you mean I fight dragons? I'm like, no, I want to imagine dragons. I fight dragons. Well, and, and I think we all like to have that story. You know, my, I mean, my dad tells me about how he was in a club with you two, and it was either L.A. or San Francisco. I don't remember which, which house he lived in at the time, but the he was in a hundred. There was like a hundred people in a club, and this some you British too. band is up there, and they're like, oh, I guess we'll go see this band called U2. Like, that's fine. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, in in the early '80s and 
Um, and then my, uh, uh, you know, I went and saw White Stripes when they were opening for, mm-hmm. um, who was it? I think it was Garbage. I think they opened for Garbage. And, you know, everyone's like, oh, yeah, White Stripes. They come up with like, their one foot. hit album. It's your foot. Yeah, you kept on kicking it. I thought it was a chair leg, and then I realized there's no, no chairs. It's, it's back there. <clears throat> no, and, and okay. Uh, same with Linkin Park was another one for me. I started found listening. Them. I found Linkin Park at a Sam Goody. Wow. Oh, like, Sam Goody's. I was like, oh. Suncoast Motion Picture Company. I don't know if you guys ever went to that store in the mall. No, so, that Suncoast. was too far away for to drive. <laughs> I, but <clears throat> but if you if, if you kind of take that idea that people want a certain because you could even say you have the same the, the same ingredients. Taylor Swift is very very good at putting those things together and garnering a huge a, a huge following. But there for every one Taylor Swift, there's 99 other people who try to sound like Taylor Swift, but they they just don't they don't get it out in front of the right eyes. Their marketing isn't the right thing. Their 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 beat isn't the right way. Or no, so like music is better or worse. Is interesting because like a big thing of that is finding a production company. Because as soon as you get a production company that has the money to get you in front of everyone's eyes and you hit the four chords, you then explode. Yeah. It's because they have a distribution channel just like Snickers. That's why Snickers gets in front of you. So why is he using Tide? Because Mon Pa shops, I use a company called Drops. They mm-hmm. are a mail order. They do not come in stores. Their distribution model does not get them in stores. Oftentimes, it's not about what's best. Why do we all like Lay's potato chips? Are they the best potato chips? I don't think so. It's really hard to mess up potato chips, though. But at the same, so, but Lay's has the distribution. Mm-hmm. Lay's is owned by Pepsi, which is also owns Taco Bell. They all are owned by the same parent company. Interesting. Yum, yum. So you got brands. Huh. Co. Cool. So sometimes it's not about a differentiation, it's about the convenience. It's getting it in front of enough eyes. Boom. So Amazon. Yeah, and that's that. That's what allowed Amazon to allow small sellers to explode, is because they could get a small person's product in front of more eyes than ever before, Millions. and just e-commerce in general. Yeah, no, we have um, just in. Uh, um, so we re- when uh, myself and Brian, we recently launched uh, this floating dice. Floatingd20.com. Check it out now. It's also available on Amazon.com, and the traffic that we get to that is insane for a new product. Like, there's just a smidgen of SEO on the page. There's no ads running to it, and it's already get it already gets more hits a day than the current Facebook ad that we have running to sending people to Etsy. That's crazy. So it's it's live. Yep. Uh, that scares me. I mean, I'm excited, but also like, well, is it's it, not FBA. It's only uh, FBM. Uh-huh. Is it an FBM? Or are you guys running it as an Amazon custom? Mm-hmm. Amazon, okay. custom. Amazon custom. Yeah. Well, because D and D is 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 huge. It and that's just because of like culturally now you have the movie, you have Critical Role, yeah, you have Chris Dimension Pratt. Twenty. Oh, way to go! You just dated this podcast yeah. again. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> Mario movie. Yay! Yeah, but he doesn't. He doesn't roll D twenties. But uh, the, we should. We should. Oh. You guys should see a movie that is that we just saw that's up and coming. It's called the Super Mario movie. <laughs> we just saw it. Yeah, we 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 did it before it was cool. <laughs> we we watched it before it made a billion dollars. Go buy Alibaba stock. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't. Well, we could pretend like we're the future. No. Um, Listen, s- Biff. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, I. But I. Uh, so. Kind of reeling it back a little bit, where you're talking about the distribution and and what you're doing, and getting it in front of eyes um, on Amazon. I do not disagree with you. However, one of the challenges, like so, floating D20s do not exist as of right now. No one is making them on Amazon. There Correct. Is, well, on Amazon, there's one other person who makes them and sells them on their own website. Floating? Yeah, I I can show you the the video. It's it's different though. It's 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 a completely different product, so I'm I'm not worried about it at all. And it it technically existed before us. So the question I have is is Amazon can give you that, but I feel like Amazon is a fierce 
price-based differentiator platform mm. in that you you could put that up on there, but the moment that someone else starts making those but make, puts them, makes them at scale and puts them in prime and does have all of that stuff, you... You, I, I, I would be in trouble. Irrelevant. You will no longer because we have had that issue with one of our, our sandals. One of our sandal lines, awesome, excellent sandal, great design. It's ours. Someone came out, created a sandal that is incredibly similar, put a lower price tag on it. And now from a consumer standpoint, they're like, yeah, that's great because now either these guys at Kaibak have to drop their price um, or – uh, the guys, the, the Chinese brand, you know, Ching Zhong or whatever oh, that, that boy. was. No, it was anyway. Hit, hit the play button. Um, <clears throat> but that that idea that you're gonna, you have to compete on price now, right? Mm-hmm. So I think Amazon has that great ability to get that smaller product out, but at the same time, I feel like it's uh, once you get there, you have to fight. You have to fight the price game a lot. Oh, I know, I know. And and the thing is that th- this is. What I like about this product is it's niche. Like, there's not a lot other one uh, out there because the the barrier to entry is is significant. Because mm-hmm. um, to make a sealed product like that at, at scale, I currently don't know a way to do it. Um, it's not impossible, but there is there is a um, there's there's a barrier to that. Um, but I, I don't know if he's sending that video. How, your stupid Android phone. How do I send it from here? Okay, you hit done. That's fine. done right in the middle. Mm-hmm. Got it. So I, I think you're right. Do, do you need a, you, do you need a differentiator? I don't think I, I, you don't need to make it where you're engineering something that's totally different. Um, me too products are okay. And I don't mean me too in the... In Hashtag like the, me too? Yeah, not Boy. like in the political sense. <laughs> My look to you was like, too. Dude. <laughs> I was like, bringing that back. What is it, 2018? Right. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of, oh, is, of is, another Is that the one where like, you, you hop onto someone else's listing? No, or... it, it's like it's like this. So let's say I have one of our Kybex sandals, and you say, well, hang on a second. This sandal that I have in my hands looks and feels just like a champion sandal a different kind of sandal okay (laughs) so then you say well it it, it's okay if it's about the same price and you know maybe it's a little bit styled differently right the idea of your spoon yeah your spoon would be a now i can't even call it that now that you guys pointed that because i've always uh, called them just like me too products that are just Uh products that are like oh yeah that's selling really well you know, uh, cell phone cases are a prime example of that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, bandwagon. Yeah, they're 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 band we call bandwagon products. There you go. Um, that's there we go. That's better. Um, but this I start a hashtag, <laughs> hashtag me too products. <laughs> oh, 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 yes. Yikes. When the, oh. I'm sorry. sorry Super I, I, side. I, I, I'm that. sorry. I Kevin Spacey out there for a minute. Hey. <laughs> Wouldn't it be fun to create? A, this the longevity of this might run its course, but wouldn't it be cool to create a social media page and see how fast you get canceled? Oh, that would be fun. You just you just do a <laughs> well, like because a you have to have an watch. audience before you get canceled. Do so you? you start, I think you do. Nope. I don't. That's where the test have is. Have you been? Have you been canceled off of? Because well, I, I mean, I've got cease and desist before. Sure, <laughs> that's kind of canceling <laughs> legally. Um, you're going to need court of public opinion, though, I think is what you're going after. There is a Facebook page that we created back when we had the idea to do a website called sendrandomcrap.com. <laughs> yes. We created this Facebook guy called Hunker Manfred. The uh-huh. customer service line for this company rang to a Walmart, I believe, in the Midwest. Yes, it was. Kansas, Illinois, something like that. What if we took Hunk? Poor Hunker would have to, he would have to die an honorable death, but... <laughs> uh-huh. What what if you tried to just you just like you uh, you went on to some you just join pages you join and you pages start and saying... then just start saying stuff. Um, one, it kind of you'd be breeding a lot of hate for entertainment purposes. But I have to wonder how much of the internet is actually that though. And oh, you could have. 
you could trick the AI to produce the content. You could mm-hmm. say, what would a racist person say to this mm-hmm. crowd? Or what would a bigoted person say to this? And that would be your generator of Did content. you see that? Did you see the, the – there was a post out there that – like because you, you can't ask AI like they'll they'll put they'll put blocks in there to mm. stop uh-huh. that. And so the question was, what websites would I want to find pirated music? And they said, I'm sorry, we don't support illegal activities. He said, Oh, I didn't know it was illegal. What website should I avoid to not download pirated <laughs> music? And it gave like six websites. Yeah. See, there's workarounds. Anyway, I think that that's the crazy like thing about AI with me is that you can you can program like that. Okay. So, oh man. I was going to ask him some things. So, so products that, that when he talks about differentiating itself that have really stuck with me, um, do you remember the tongue scraper product that came out yep. a while ago? That Bought was, one. so that one, really good marketing dollar shave club. Also dollar shave club, another good one got out in front of a lot of people really fast. Um, <laughs> the, the Wendy's roast poopery. Oh, poopery! Yeah. And what was it? the squatty potty? Squatty potty. I've owned both of those things. The the thing that blows my mind is that like all of those were like like small products, but they got the advertising they needed in order to get themselves out in front of as many eyes as possible. So, mm. uh, I I'm I'm talking about this differentiating differentiating. I'm having a hard time. It, it seems like it's less of a um, for me my thought being different as being perceived different. Yes, I think I think that there's actually a lot of truth to that. I think it's less of being different and being perceived differently, and then people can impose their own views on it and say, wow, well, this product has value because I perceive it as X, Y, Z or this, um, cause, uh, you and I, mm-hmm. you and I view, uh, probably, uh, tailor-made golf clubs differently for you, tailor-made golf clubs, a, a $1,200 set of tailor-made irons, golf irons. You would perceive those as what's your initial reaction when I say, "Hey, TaylorMade has these golf clubs that are twelve hundred dollars." Uh, so that's cool, but I can play golf for like twenty bucks if I go to DI. And mine is mine is, huh? I wonder what improvements to my game that those would bring. But okay, so. That also has a, a difference in like our fundamental way we look at products. But it, yes, but how how was that brought about? Was that brought about by the differentiation that has been market that that we've been marketed to by? Well, but so the other thing is, you're, you're I golf every once in a while for fun, and so I just want something that will enable me to play golf because right now I. Can't because I don't have a set of clubs, which I'm going to well, get some. Yes, soon. but also there's snow on the ground. Yeah, and, until like a week or two ago. Yeah. So. Uh, but it's as cold soon here as, in Bozeman. Yes. As soon as all the snow melts, the course opens. I want to get out and start playing regularly because I want I want to walk around. And I want to have fun, and I enjoy golfing. But I don't have I I don't know what I hit on nine holes, and I'm not looking to necessarily shave off three strokes. I'm looking to just play. Yeah, but you also you, right now you don't have golf clubs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So here's so here's if I don't a, have golf clubs, why a, would I spend twelve hundred dollars when I can spend five hundred dollars and get a set of sixteen? Because these ones are better. Yeah, but I don't know what better is yet. Oh, there it is. I was waiting. I was waiting for that to come in. I was. You don't know what better is yet because. The experience, the differentiation. It, it's not. It's it, you haven't gained enough experience to know what better is. And I think that when you talk about the four chords, when you talk about that, like this is what people want. Once you know what better is, it's hard to go back. Ooh. Okay. Hey yo. Oh. 
That is so true, though. That Isn't is it? so oh, true. A hundred percent. How hard is it when you rent a 2023 you Nissan li- Maxima with you all the features? You literally took the example out of my mouth. I was going to say that. And then you get back cars. into your 2005 Toyota Sequoia that you are happy with always. Like, I love my Toyota Sequoia. It's an 05. It's old, almost 200,000 miles on it. But then I go to something that has, you know, adaptive cruise control mm, or nice. air conditioning that's that's cold as soon as you turn it on. And then you go back and you go, this is hard. So I think that that is, you know, when you're talking about that audience, people who drive Teslas and get all those features and then have to go back to a Hyundai or something. Hey, where you actually have to drive the car. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. Use my hands. Have you seen the video where there's no one in the driver's seat and a cop's trying to pull them over? I have. And they're like, <laughs> it's it's one of the it's one of the car pilot programs in Arizona. Uh, it's the company that uses Jaguars, whatever company that is. But yeah, they're pretty popular in Arizona right now. Anyway, that's where it was. Is it like a, is it like a taxi or something? Or mm-hmm. yep. so it'll pick you up, drop you off, and there's no driver. Correct. Oh man, there's another video of that same company where two like uh, old senior citizens get in with, and his granddaughter sets it all up and she's videoing them the whole time. And one, coincidentally, one is deaf and another one, his it's friend blind. is, no, <laughs> <laughs> is uh, obviously more vocal. But he's just like, there's nobody in the seat. There's nobody in the seat. And they have kind of an East, East Coast accent. Uh-huh. It's fantastic. And the guy that's deaf is just like... <laughs> sign in and but yeah check it out but yeah i i do think that i think once you've once you've had those luxuries you could call them it is really hard to go back to the the other way of to go back to coach after first class it's very true like well because oh man you're not thinking of like other things so high speed internet Oh, oh yeah! If you go, if you go like hundred megabytes down to like ten, yeah. Or, when ten megabytes, this is gonna age us. But ten megabytes used to be the shiz. I remember when you had the fifty-six k dial up. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. And My dad worked for IBM, and so we always had. Kink, kink. And you're like getting like one line of an image at a time. Oh, oh yeah, the image would download a line at a time. I had forgotten like, about oh, man. that. Oh, I can almost see it. <laughs> That's where the sites to download music would have really ramped up. Because, mm-hmm. you know, a song would take, you'd have to leave it overnight. You would. you say, oh, And I'll, pray I'll, that the I'll connection would. album. And, uh-huh. and then to try and move it before CD burners, you're like trying to put it across diskettes and zip drives and. <laughs> <clears throat> Crazy. So. So once you, yeah, once, you, once you, your customer. Like this is <clears throat> this is something that I was taught by a student of mine once that he mm-hmm. said, you want to give them what they want and show them what they need. So the idea is, yeah, well, what do you want? Well, I want to fly from here to there. Okay, that this is what you want. But let me show you what it could look like. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden it's it's hard to go back. It's hard to go back and sit on an Allegiant or a Spirit Airline after you've had you know, uh, a first class seat on a, on a, on a Delta. It's, it's just... true. My kids for the first time last year flew Southwest airlines after having flown. Only we didn't Legion. know this. They had only flown Allegiant air and they were like snacks being brought. Like, do we have to pay for these? And it's like, no, these are, you go ahead. And there's like, we can sit like three, three and three. Like, uh, what was the other thing that they were? Oh, uh, the internet. On the mm. plane, they were just like, "Oh, we, I was like, go ahead and get on. You know, you can do that." But it costs. It costs money. <laughs> it does not. It is free to you. You can bring two bags per person. Like you yeah. can bring your whole bedroom <laughs> on a Southwest when, flight. When we when we when we flew to Hawaii and we could actually like check, we got like a free checked bag. We got all this stuff because we didn't fly like the the budget airlines. It was it Who was unusual. Fly? Hmm? Who did you yeah, fly? Who took you there? I think Delta. You think? I don't remember. That was like a month ago. Yeah. You don't, don't remember what airline you flew? No. 
I know it was in Southwest. Did you fly out of Salt Lake? Yes. Probably Delta. I, I, I'm, I'm or 90% American. sure it was. Was it direct? No. We stopped oh. in California. Well, that changes oh. it. It does. Because South, Southwest always bumps out of California. Did you get assigned seats? I like this kind of thing. Yes, we did get assigned seats. Okay, so it was not Southwest. Not Southwest. We had to pay extra for the assigned seats. How many bags could you check? Um, We got like one for... We we, we only checked one because we didn't need Could you just look on your phone at the confirmation and tell us? I could. How many seats? Was it all four of you in a row? Or was it two and two? Uh, It was was three and one. (laughs) But we did that so that one person could sleep while the other person was watching the kids. Oh. So um, let me let me look. Rachel is watching. Oh, Rachel's your wife. Sorry, I dropped her name. You can oh, bleep no. it out. She's watching this podcast, going like, "It was this airline." Uh, it was. It, yeah, she's probably watching it right next to me. I'm gonna say United? I'm gonna, United or Delta. Delta. Those are my two. I'm pretty sure it was Delta, but not not Hawaiian or. Watch it, watch it ends up being Spirit, and he was like, this was the greatest was airline so great. ever. And then we, we get to teach you of... United Airlines. Hey! Up top. So United breaks guitars. <laughs> I, I remember that. Don't uh, you? Yeah. There was a, a guy, he checked his bag, and, or he had a guitar, and somehow, I think he carried it on, but they said, no, you can't. So they, put so it they made him check it at the gate. And he came back, and it was busted up and you know it's like sorry there's nothing we can do about it come so on he wrote a song about and did a music video about how united breaks guitars and it went viral and it cruised across the internet until united was like please we need you to help us stop it and he's like too bad that <laughs> Not that my problem. flight has taken off <laughs> I'm uh, sorry. Once the doors have closed, you're not allowed to pass through them again. So, okay, going to the having to know the difference. Um, so the people who sell budget stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love budget stuff. No. Um, are, are they taking advantage of people who don't know what's good? No. Absolutely. No, I'm not taking advantage. Or are they allowing people to try the experience to to then move to something better later on. There, I would say there are budget things you're interested in. My, this is a generalization, but you're interested in velocity. You're is, if you're some, something that's budget, you are selling as many of them as you possibly can. Interesting. Yeah. And, I, and budget's usually white label, meaning that it's, it's already being made in some other factory. You, you probably haven't developed it yourself. You're just picking it up from a, a factory that already makes them. Airlines are a little different. but Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, w- I would say it's, it's probably rare that someone has created a product, done the R&D, done everything, and they're the only one that makes it, and their goal is to get it out to people as cheap as possible. Cheap, yeah. Like, in like, fact, like, in fact take... that's damaging yeah. to do it that way. It is absolutely damaging. There's a reason that the only time an electric car really took off was when Tesla said, these are sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 sports cars. And I was like, why in the world would you want an electric sports car? Because it's fast. But yeah, and because you before that came out, sports cars were we want them loud, we want them, you know, how many V can we get? Do we want mm-hmm. a a V eight? No, we want a V ten. No, we want a I V12. want something. Oh, get all the all the V's and <laughs> and <laughs> nope. So, but this all them D's. <laughs> I wasn't going to say it. I was not. I did. I went there. Yay me. Um, no, I, I think that when you're, the idea is accessibility. Um, making it, making things accessible. So you were talking about, um, you know, cheap golf clubs. And you said, yeah. well, go, I go to the local, the local thrift shop. You could, and that's make very accessible. But also, you know, we're talking about Pine Meadow. Pine Meadow basically makes knockoffs of big brands. It's a much more entry level to the point where someone can, who doesn't have the means otherwise, do something that if only TaylorMade did stuff, they would never have the opportunity to do it. Someone may never be able to fly from, uh, you know, Salt Lake City over to Chicago, but Spirit's like, hey, it's not going to be comfortable, 
but we can do it for you and we can do it at a price that you are going to be able to get to. And that accessibility bar lowers to the point that think of, Mm -hmm. I mean, cruises. Yeah. Does that mean that an interior room is taking advantage of people? No, it allows people to go on a cruise that otherwise they would never have the opportunity to go on a cruise because they can get that interior room last minute for like $200 for a, a cruise. It's weird. It's weird because it like it. It almost seems like it's a it's a symbiotic relationship for like these budget items to exist. So people try them. They find out that they like the experience. They like traveling. They like golf. They like three D printing. And then they're like, "Yeah, but this three D printer, as great as it is, it kind of sucks. <laughs> Let me buy a better three D printer." And then and then they they move to the more that's so there's a book that's called the innovators dilemma uh-huh. it's by Clayton Christensen I highly recommend reading it if you know how to read and I highly recommend listening to it if you don't know how to read that's what I had to do mm-hmm. um, but essentially in what it talks about is American Steel companies uh, what, what what happened is they would they would they would develop these high-end steel products and they're focusing just on high-end steel well then a small startup would come in and just build rebar and the steel companies were like, well, we don't want to worry about rebar because it's cheap. It doesn't make us a lot of money. We're making these high-end items. So they would let them have the rebar. Well, what would happen is after a while of doing rebar, they would make money doing the rebar. They would start earning more money, then start going to higher output items to the point where they grew to be competitors on, on the same scale as the big players. So it is symbiotic. It's, you know, a, a high-end company... Tesla, I don't think, will ever come out with a $15,000 no, $20, EV, even if they could make it car. that way. I just don't see that being the case because... Well, they haven't developed a brand. Now, I could see Tesla creating a, a, another company called Edison and then <laughs> releasing a budget <laughs> car called Edison. <laughs> I don't Edison know. Edison Motors. Westinghouse. <laughs> What whatever it is, and then and then making a budget one, but that's because they've built up Tesla as a certain brand, and I don't think that they would. You don't want to dilute the brand. dilute the brand. Yeah. yeah. Well, look at. I mean, you have you had Scion, which doesn't exist anymore, but that was an entry level Toyota. Oh, Jota. Then you had your Toyotas, which have a, a, a bit of a wide range. Mm-hmm. And then step up from Toyota is a. Hang on! Don't tell me! Don't! No! 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 I know oh. it! I know it! I, uh, Lexus. Ultima? Lexus. Ooh. Lexus. Lexus is owned by Toyota. Nissan, their step up is Infinity. Oh yeah. So a Toyota Honda, Honda is Acura. Acura, very good, very good. I only know that because I own that Acura. Um, That's right, you did. But this, so that the, the idea. Ford? Oh yeah. Does what is Ford, Ford have? A, yeah, they do have a premium brand. Uh-huh. Lincoln. Lincoln. Really? Yeah. yeah. Mercury was a was a was a high brand for them for a while too. Mercury Corvette was like the below Cadillac. the Ford. I know that. Oh, was it? Yeah, it was Mercury, oh. Ford, Lincoln. But um, Ford also now owns Aston Martin. No way. I think so. Hang on. Hang on. Let's fact check that. Fact check that. Uh, but yeah, it's because I, I, I know that um, uh, Corvette has Cadillac. Um, General Chevy? Motor. No, nah, Chevy owns Cadillac. Corvette is a Chevy. Yeah, sorry. Corvette is, Corvette is also. Because the funny thing is, is they go to the Corvette factory Corvettes and um, Cadillacs are made from the in same the same thing in the same factory because it's both their 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 ones. So th- those are all under Chevy. And then is GM just part of the the Chevy brand or is it its own thing as well? I think reverse that. I think Chevy is part of GM. GM owns Sh- Chevy. I believe so. Okay. Yes, General Motors. General Motors owns all A the che- all the Chevy brands. They own the Buick brand. They yeah. owned Oldsmobile when it was around. Um, oh, Hummer. Oldsmobile Alero. Hummer is owned by oh, by General car. Motors. So we 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 want to start. I know we want to come into the moral of the story. Man. My word. So hang on, but I gotta find it. What's not Aston Martin? I was incorrect. I thought that they had a share in some higher end Ferrari, um, Shelby. Well, it, I mean Shelby, obviously, but um, obviously. Uh, car. I companies. heard about I heard about uh, some American car company buying up some. Ferrari. Oh, that'd be funny. Well, that the, the, was the whole Ford versus Ferrari movie. I watched it the other day, and it's it's surprisingly good. Surprisingly, yeah. 
Why would you, why'd you say surprisingly? Because I, I wasn't expecting much from it. I really? Mean, if, if I did, I would have watched it when it came out God, 10 my... years ago. <laughs> okay. How long has it been? It came out a while ago. Strike what I had said. I cannot find any. any oh, Ford has not acquired any. anybody. No, I, as far as I, as far as I can find, they. I thought they had a stake in a higher end. But if they company. do, you heard it here first, folks. That's right. Uh, Mini Cooper is BMW. Mini. Really, I didn't I know that Mini's one. Mini's owned by BMW. Okay. Um. So I think the moral on this one is that when you're looking, and I don't think there's a do you need a differentiator? Do you? I think that as you're developing a product, as you're developing a brand to ensure that you know what it is that you are creating that is the differentiator, whether it is a an actual uh, design difference mm-hmm. on that product or brand, um, or if, like what Anthony was saying at the beginning about um, it's just a, uh, 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 the differentiator is just color or design, um, like, like, you know, just, just making it look pretty or different. Um, if it's if you want to go on on price differentiation, which we all have kind of agreed is not the greatest place to go. Yeah, um, the bottom. but but you could go with um, instead of saying what's cheapest, you go with what has the most value because you can be cheap, but if you have a lot of you know value. extra bells and whistles. Let yeah. me let me interrupt you real quick because I was talking to Anthony about this bef- when you were gone, but um, I was talking about the the tongue scraper, uh, Dollar Shave Club. Uh, squatty potty, squatty potty poopery. poopery, all of those ones. What they did is they sold a solution. Yes. Oh, when in, in the future one, we should talk about pain points. We should talk about solving customer pain points. And really, the 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 idea is not to go after something that's big and flashy. It's how do you solve an issue? How do you solve someone's problem? Because that. once you can solve someone's problem, money, money, money. Yeah, it's all the money, especially if it's boring. Do you have to tell them what the problem is, though? Sometimes you have to show them. The only reason we like mint toothpaste is because there was a whole campaign about halitosis. It was that was a basically well, no, that, li- Listerine. Yeah. Listerine invented right. halitosis. Listerine. Yeah, it said, "Hey, your breast stinks," and you're like, "Does it?" Like up do until you, that point, that was. Do just, you know what Listerine was originally sold for? Wasn't it a douche? Uh. Yes. No, that was it. wasn't like that no, was no, no, listerine. No, no. That was no, no, no. It, no, it, it was listerine. It okay. was a floor cleaner, and you would also use it for cleaning your your parts. Yeah, and and it Whoa. wasn't selling enough, and so they're like, you can also rinse your mouth with it, and it'll make your breath smell better. And they're like, well, who cares about the breath? What if we call it halitosis? And what if it's now a clinical thing, and you're like, oh wait, do you have bad breath? And it's like, well. Everyone and everyone just dealt with oh, like, like yeah, people, wait, people wait, have what, what's that it's, smell? It's wait, you have halitosis? Well, I got the cure for halitosis. What's that? Bad breath. It's like I just eat a piece of gum or which well, gum and gum in and of itself. Do you eat wait, hang on. Chew a piece of gum. Yeah, let's get us up straight here. Yeah, you don't want to stuck in your intestines. You for five eat years. it, it'll stay there forever. Ever, not five years. Ever. Oh, ever. So but I uh, was the last time you said gum in your turds. Oh. Yeah, well, exactly. When, when was the last time you There's saw There's just me? a giant ball of gum in my stomach that's been there since. So I had my first is piece of gum. Is it colon cancer or is it Wrigley's? <laughs> I think cancer is a gum. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. So hold it longer with Big Red. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh no. So the. Uh, uh, so my closing arguments are, and because I'd love to talk about that, I'd love to talk about basically creating and defining pain points um, as you're as you're trying to solve that, like you know the poopery or the or the squatty potties and um, and that that aspect. But I'm just right that knowing it's selling a solution, whatever your differentiator is, whatever makes it, kind of create that that in in your business planning, and then from there say okay. This is how it's different. I mean, even so, I, I grabbed this baseball that I because I thought about. So this is a baseball made by Rawlings, and lots of companies make baseballs, but this is an official league MLB stamped baseball. So they basically went with a licensing. You know, if you have this certain thing, it's licensing. So therefore, I'm the only one that's that's doing licensing on it. Therefore, that's what makes a difference. So um, finding that differentiation and then making it so that your it's available to your customers through a good distribution channel. That's all I got. I'm done. My differentiation would be in your marketing. I think you need to uh, position your product in a way that makes you unique and stands out. Hmm. 
I, I, th and this is less of a moral story, more of a, a, a self-reflected thing. When we look at products, we look at, at, at gaps. Like, I want to buy XYZ, and I can't find it, and then we fill that. And I'm wondering if I need to re-approach our, our products in more of a um, solving a customer's problem than our own problem. So changing that, finding finding that way to differentiate our store, and then I, it makes me wonder. We talk about diluting the brand. Is if I need to create different brands now that I can use to sell my products. But this has been a very interesting episode. Um, join us Wednesdays. Uh, we launch uh, episodes. They're available anywhere. Audio podcasts are available. Um, we're also on YouTube and Rumble. Uh, we like, comment, subscribe helps us get found. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Tell us what you want to hear. Oh yeah, leave comments. Yeah, let us know what you want to talk about. I said, what if in this like round of kind of unofficially officially made this thing that that's how we kind of wrap it up? We just kind of like give a synopsis of what we thought. What if we add to that and at the beginning we write down or jot down on our phones? what our closing is going to be and see the changes see the changes at the end oh, that's about that actually